YouTube, it's Jessie Lee, and call me hashtag Boss Lee, and I hope you love the video you're about to see. I'm pretty sure you will, because it's always content over here. I want to tell you about a couple other things, specifically one that you can also get some more value from, and all you need to do, and you can do it now, just pause this video, is go ahead and text YouTube to 844-277-9762. I'm going to be really upping the text game, and it's literally me texting you back. So if you want to have a more one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, enjoy the video, subscribe, comment below, and make sure you text YouTube again to 844-277-9762. Hello, hello, everybody. What's going on? It is Jesse Lee. You can also call me hashtag Boss Lee or the people's mentor. And today we are taking you to school for sure. I have somebody that I have trusted with our team multiple times. He was actually one of our first guests ever at Empire U, which was so cool. He absolutely rocked the house with recruiting and things of that nature. Um, he is, I love his story. You know, he's very much so somebody who has had success in traditional business. He's had success in network marketing. Then he had success in coaching and now is having tremendous success in coaching. And I just love what he's doing with the profession because he's an innovator. Okay. And we're going to talk today a lot about uh, success and what it really takes. And I will tell you the one thing I notice about this man is that he innovates and he is not copying people. If you're familiar with rank makers, you're probably a member. Uh, that was Ray. And I really never saw people do this idea of a, uh, a pay for play Facebook group, tons of coaching, tons of value, give, 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 give until Ray did. And one thing I've noticed is a lot of trainers out there will go and they will do some kind of training. And if I trace it back earlier in the day, it started with Ray early in the morning in Rank Makers. And so he's just one of those people where he has heart-driven servant leadership. And it is, it, I'm sure it's why his success is so, so, so profound. But with that, all his success, blah, 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 we'll get to it because we're going to talk about how to have success in your business, what it really takes. More importantly to me, I know y'all know my heart. I know y'all know Jesse Lee. I love the way he loves his wife the most. Like he's got all these beautiful babies. Oh my God, they're gorgeous. And of course he's a great dad, but I have to tell you, if you are a man listening to the podcast, and I know there's a lot of you out there, take yourself to Ray Higdon's Facebook page and watch how he loves Jessica. It is so loud. It is so <laughs> proud. It is so, this is my wife. She's the most perfect thing on earth. I cherish her. Like you, oh God, like, oh, oh, love the ladies are going over there right now to screenshot and send to their men. I already know it. Uh, I love it. I love your love. And I love how you love this profession. And you love people. And I know that's why you're so successful. And I'm so grateful to call you a dear friend of mine. Thank you for everything you've done for, for our team, for our business. Um, with no further ado, because I'll go all day telling you about this man. Y'all need to get a pen and paper. You need to screenshot this sucker. You need to put it in your Instagram, your Facebook, your everywhere. Share with a friend, send to a friend, do whatever you need to do. Ladies and gentlemen, none other than Mr. Ray Higdon. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's awesome. You're welcome. How Honored are you? Here. No, I'm, I'm really, really grateful you're on here and uh, seriously grateful for, for our friendship and everything you've done over the past yeah. few years since I've been in network marketing. It's, it's unbelievable how you've grown. I'm, I'm, well, I love watching. I love watching. And, and, and ditto. I mean, you know, you've grown tremendously and impacting so many people and helping a lot of people. So uh, kudos to you as well, for sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, Let's talk about it because okay. I feel like a lot of people, they, okay, my least favorite word is luck. Okay. Let's talk about that word a little bit today, maybe, because I know I'll get fired up. Maybe you'll get fired up. It'll be a fiery conversation. Uh, but what, it, what does it really take to be successful? How do you go from real estate mogul to network marketing superstar into coaching numero uno? Like what? Talk to me. We need to know. <laughs> so, so yeah, you know, it's an interesting, you know, time, at least, um, you know, as of this recording, you know, we're going through this whole crisis and the quarantine and everything. And that's where at least this version of my career was really birthed out of is, you know, I was doing well in real estate. I don't know about a mogul, but I was doing well and, um, you know, flipping properties and, you know, had rental properties and had you know, different things, whatever. Um, but definitely had some success over there. And then when the market changed, I got wiped out. And what I mean by wiped out, because sometimes you hear that, like, what does that mean? 
I literally lost every dime I'd ever made or saved. So wiped out my IRA, my 401k, sold my furniture, went into foreclosure, uh, also went through a divorce. At one point, I was sleeping on my buddy's couch. And I had uh, you know, a little, little wad of cash that I had left and two credit cards left that hadn't figured out I wasn't paying them. And so that's where I was uh, when uh, I got introduced to, you know, to network marketing. And so I think part of you know, what does it take you know, to succeed is just your, your willingness to face adversity. Um, I have not found that it is a lack of obstacles or an abundance of support that creates success. And I think a lot of people think that. I think a lot of people think, well, if only my spouse supported me, or if only my family believed in me, or if only I didn't get fired from that job, or this didn't happen, or that didn't happen. I've never found that to be true. I've always found that the successful people that motivate and inspire me had an abundance of obstacles and <laughs> often didn't have much support either. And so I think it's being willing to move forward despite. And there's two words that you know if every entrepreneur could could learn, I think they'd be much better off. And that's the word despite and the word until, you know, I was going to succeed despite what had happened to me in my childhood or in my past, or, you know, even the current um, to, I was going to keep going until I made it happen. And, and so I think, you know, more people just having that tenacity, having that um, I'm, I know that not every day is going to be amazing, but I'm going to continue to show up no matter what, until I get to my destination or where I want to go. And then by there, you got a different view of the landscape. So you choose a different, different destination and you pursue that. And so I think it's just mainly, mainly tenacity, not skill set, not IQ level, not, um, you know, support or, or lack of obstacles. So I'm going to guess that things probably got pretty bad in there for a while. If you've lost every single penny to your name, mm -hmm. um, if, my, if my memory serves me correctly, I think you were a million dollars in debt at one time. I think I heard that. Okay. He's nodding. I know you guys can't see him. Oh, uh, yes, some people correct. Think it's correct. <laughs> Cause I think some people are like, I'm $50,000 in debt. I have no options. And yeah. it's so inspirational. And I don't even like the word inspirational. It's just so it gives hope. I yeah. think to people when they see, oh my gosh, Ray Higdon was a million dollars in debt. Okay. What? Oh my, yeah. okay. Wow. So this tenacity, you're going through crazy, you know, bankruptcy, divorce, all this stuff. Uh, how did you survive? Like, can we go through that? Because I feel like some people right now are like, yeah. I don't have a million dollars in debt and I'm, I'm drowning over here. Give it to me. Ray. Sure. What do I need yeah. to do? How do I get tenacious? Yeah, you know, it's, and I'm not saying I didn't have down periods. I mean, I definitely for probably a good year was um, just kind of, um, I don't know, out of reality. Um, I was drinking very heavily. Um, not proud of that because I do have two older boys. And, um, you know, I think it was such a blow to my ego of having succeeded at, at, most of the things that I had tried, never having fast success, but, but, you know, working until I, you know, succeeded in something. And so this was just such a major blow to the ego and to, um, you know, how I thought I was as a person that, I mean, I was getting blackout drunk uh, most nights um, and not just weekends, but like most nights. And, and so it was just um, not a good time. And I would, if I had to guess, I was probably in that kind of funk for, maybe, uh, maybe eight, 10 months, you know, it was, it was really rough. And I'll tell you what, actually something I never would have suspected that actually turned it around was I'm on Facebook and I'm posting all this law of attraction stuff. Right. And I'm, I'm like totally depressed, drinking heavily, but I'm like, oh, I believe it, achieve it. Right. And so I'm posting all this stuff that, that I can't really find myself to believe, but maybe someone else is believing out there. And someone invites me to actually not just invites me, but pays for me to go to this seminar. And I was hoping that, okay, maybe I'll learn how to make some money, right? Because that's definitely what I needed. And so I go there and it was, I guess, something totally different, which was I had repair relationship with dad on a to-do list with no priority. And what happens is people die. And, and so I decided that, you know what? I haven't talked to him in 13 years. I'm going to reach out to him. And, um, and I want him to meet, meet his grandsons, which he had never met, who at, right then I think was nine or 10 years old or something, something right around that. And so uh, I go up to Indiana. He actually was nice enough to buy, buy our tickets to go up to Indiana. I went up there, he met, um, you know, met my sons and we came back 
And it was like this weight had been lifted off of me. And literally within probably two days, maybe three days, I got invited to a, a meeting that represented a home, uh, a network marketing company. And that's the company I joined and went on to become the number one income earner of. And so I do not, I don't know where I would be if I didn't repair that relationship, which seemingly has nothing to do with making money. But it was just like, I just, I don't know, I just, something in me was like released. And I think a lot of times, you know, we're trying to learn all these strategies and tactics and, you know, all these, you know, SEO tricks or hashtags or whatever, when really it's like, forgive your damn sister or like, you know, um, you know, reach back out to your mom or dad or, or like, you know, you know, try to repair some things that has nothing to do with money that'll create a new openness in, in your heart and in your um, future. And so that that's what did it for me. And then I, you know, caught the bug and I got back into work mode and, and you know, went and made it happen in that company. Um, first of all, thank you uh, for, for sharing that. I think a lot of people sometimes are scared to share their ugly truths and their traumas. Mm. And I think mm -hmm. that's where we actually all connect in those vulnerabilities, yeah. um, especially with the, you know, the alcohol and things of that nature. I definitely have a lot of recovering addicts who can totally just, I know you just touch their hearts. So, so thank you for that. And it's interesting <laughs> because um, I don't know if you know this, I don't think I ever told you this, but so I went to your, your, your seminar, right? Uh, God, whatever years ago that is five, I don't know, four or five years ago or something. And uh, in in Florida, and somebody paid for my ticket, and so who knows? You know, it's interesting. Sometimes maybe it really is that paying forward and just that that loving and open energy and willingness to to receive. And I truly believe energy is everything. I think that energy has a ton to do with people's success. Uh, you know, there's, I mean, like. There's plenty of stuff we don't feel like doing. Quite frankly, like I was in a crazy meeting right before this and I was like, I need to make sure my energy's right before I get off there. Like, do I really want to do this rock? Do I ask him? Like, and I was like, no, like, you know how to get your energy right. And like, raise your friend. Like, let's get up on there. It's going to be the best podcast. That's and right. just knowing That's that right. you can take that little shift I think is certainly one of my keys to, to my, my success. People always want to know what's the, I'm like, energy, energy. Yeah. Do you, energy um, in the marketplace is huge. Yeah. Do you have any, do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. So, you know, it's energy in the marketplace is there are, I think there's, there's two statements. I, I talked about this the other day somewhere, wherever I was, but um, there are two statements that I think, the people who never reach their potential often say, and that is, why bother? And I don't feel like it. And so the why bother is always this justification that whatever thing you're about to do, that, um, you know, that you just lessen it. You just justify how small it is. You know, so, you know, for example, uh, July 15, 2009, I decided I was gonna do a video a day and I've never stopped. So 10 and a half years of at least one video a day, every single day, many days, I didn't feel like it many days. I mean, six months in, because this was prior to lives, you know, you would upload a video to YouTube and hope for the best and many months. I mean, I think I was like 180 videos in before really hardly anything started taking off or started generating any leads or, or anything like that. And Did you say 10 so years, by the way, let me beat, beat back that up. <laughs> Can you, I mean, I don't think y'all are listening to him, okay? Because I feel like he glossed over it. Can you say that again? I just, I just want to, I want to make sure that my ears are functioning properly. Did you, say, what did you say? Yeah, I've, I've, I've done at least one video, at least one video a day, every day since July 15, 2009. So it's 10 and a half years. And I've never, never missed one. Um, you know, <laughs> when I was on my honeymoon in Fiji, I would do them before my beautiful bride was awake. But, um, but yeah, every day I've done one, at least one every day. And obviously some days, many more. Um, but it's just for me, if I'm not putting energy or value or really whatever you want to call it into the marketplace, I feel very strange. Like I, I mm. physically start to like fidget and get weird. Um, because if I'm not putting energy and value into the marketplace, then I don't deserve to grow. And if my mission is to impact as many people that want to improve, then I have to do my job. I have to be addicted to my activity more than the marketplace's response. And so I have to show up and, and do what needs to be done, whether I feel like it or not. I remember there were two 
kind of periods of time where I had uh, one time really, really massive elbow pain and one time really, really massive shoulder pain. And so I'm literally popping pain pills before the videos, but I got those damn videos done. And so why bother and I don't feel like it are the killers of would-be legends in this industry or any industry. And so I hated prospecting, hated it, hated it. And, you know, because I was just coming out of being super depressed. I was just, so getting all these no's and all this rejection and, and, and people, some of them were aware that I'd lost everything, some weren't. And so to have that conversation, uh, oh, I hear, I heard what happened, right? All this, you know, just, just terrible conversations. I hated, but I did it because I wanted to change where I was in life. I wanted to, you know, create something I hadn't created. So I had to do the things that I didn't want to do, regardless of how I felt that day. And so um, I really do think, I, I agree with you in that, feel not feeling like what does that have to do with it has nothing to do with it so you show up whether you feel like it or not and that's a true test of are your goals actually important and if they're not right if if retiring the spouse or building schools or water wells or building abuse centers or what whatever you really are passionate about if those aren't important then you're going to fall to the wayside on the days you don't feel like it and those things aren't going to happen Thank you for saying that. Wow. Like, I, I love that. And I've told people constantly, I don't know if you've heard this, but I tell people you don't have a consistency problem. You have a passion problem. Mm. These people have passion problems. Yeah. If you really wanted to build the, dig the well in Africa, if you really wanted to retire your, your wife, your husband, your partner, your whatever, if you really right. wanted your kid in the different school, you would, sh you would have habits. This is a habit conversation. You would have habits that are different and that are dictating that every single day by the energy you're putting in the marketplace. Like Ray just said, I did not, I don't know how I didn't know it was 10 and a half years of videos. I I'm over here thinking I'm a big deal with, I went live 700 some odd days straight. I, <laughs> loser, loser. Still That's amazing. Amazing. Still amazing. Yeah, you know, I know nope, I've got to call myself on my poop. I've got to make sure I get my habits. Correct. What do I want out of life? <laughs> it, 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 like, I know it's crazy, but wow, 10 and a half years of that. I think that's yeah. incredible because it really shows you where your priorities are. It really shows you what you care about. And it really shows you that with enough of that tenacity. And like he said, that those two words, despite and until, you know, there, there's just going to be some day when something breaks, I feel like that's in a good way. Sure. You'll for have sure. that moment where like all of a sudden, boom, somebody watches your video or somebody shares your video or somebody says a comment that just goes viral or yeah. you recruit the big leader you're looking for or you get the coaching gig or you get the speaking gig, or you get whatever. You're going right. to have that moment, but only if you're putting in that value, like he said. Right. And so I, I mean, I don't people wanna... were, you know, people are aware of these other success stories and they're often you know, heralded and lauded, but the person never wants to be that story, right? And so, like, I know, um, you know, like uh, James Dyson, I mean, he was seven years, 5,000 different models before he made a working Dyson vacuum. And now is, I think, uh, $5.8 billion worth or something like that. And so I'm what's funny is when Dyson, I- So thank you for that conversation. You what? I'm addicted. I've got like yeah, multiple nice, Dysons, right? nice. okay? I get the humidifiers, I get the air purifiers, I get the fans, I get the vacuum, hair dryer. I mean, come on, Dyson. Wow, I, I, I did get my that. wife the hair, the hair dryer. I hear it's amazing. Um, but what, speaking of my wife, what's funny is when I shared that story or when she heard me say that story, she said, man, think about his wife. <laughs> like those seven years of making 5,000 different models. I mean, wouldn't the wife be like, geez, get a job already, man. You know, like seriously, right? Uh -huh. But you look at people like Harrison uh -huh. Ford, I mean, 27 years before he got a lead role, 27 years. So why is it okay for someone as talented as, as those two are, but not okay for us, right? Mm -hmm. Why is it okay that we hear of these stories of, you know, 10,000 failures, Thomas Edison, and, you know, uh, 40 years for, uh, ACDC to be in the top 10 billboards. Like, it's okay to hear those things as long as they're not happening to us. And mm -hmm. so it's like, you know, hey, maybe your story is going to be the one that people talk about for decades. Why not you? Right. Oh, I love that. I didn't know. See, these are good. Everyone always says the same ones like Colonel Sanders, Dr. Right. Dara, Harrison Ford, 27 years, ACDC. This is, this is valuable stuff. I'm getting some good notes over here. Hope you guys are getting some good notes. Make sure you're screenshotting everything and putting it in your Instagram and Facebook stories. So like I said, I feel like we're having a conversation about habits. Yep. 
and on that now i am a big believer and i don't i never tell people my exact daily method of operation because people will have a combination of a heart attack an aneurysm <laughs> right. a stroke like i will literally cause there will be death i'm sure so yeah. i choose not to share my exact for safety method. reasons that's good for that's safety good. reasons right for the health <laughs> of the population there will never be a this is jesse lee's dmo video because yeah. i can't have that i don't have liability insurance high enough that's, I just that's don't. Good. good um so i don't want to know your exact dmo but what are some habits aside from the video a day that you will yeah. never miss what yeah. are some other things that you just you know are key and critical to your success yeah and i mean and i can tell you i imagine that at least um you know, many uh, those listening right now are probably trying to build their network marketing business, I, I would guess. And, and so the three things that I did to ensure that I became the number one income earner of that company was video a day because I hated prospecting and I knew at some point it would work. I had also read a book called Go For No. And so I went for 20 no's a day. To me, it made sense. Some people don't like the concept and whatever, whatever man, go for your numbers. I love um, the but, concept. I train yeah. it too. So go yeah. for no, great book. Everyone should buy it. So, you know, 20 no's a day. And that is no, I'm not interested or, you know, just an actual no, not a non-response. A lot of people try to wimp out and say, oh, you mean 20 non-responses? Well, I got those all the time. So 20 actual no's a day and self-development every day. Though, you know, I did admittedly, and I, and I kind of look back and wonder like, man, what would have happened? Because you can get no's for anything. I could get no's for, you know, speaking gigs or coaching clients or, or, or whatever. I did not keep that habit up. Um, I did honestly plan to phase that out as I started generating more leads and that kind of stuff. Um, the self-development one has definitely altered over the years. I mean, when I was broke, it was what's free on YouTube? What can I get at the yard sale or the, the library um, to, you know, now I, you know, I, I, I don't consume a, t a lot of courses, but I do hire a lot of coaches. So, you know, when we go into this kind of, you know, weird crisis, Corona quarantine kind of thing, I have so many different coaches that are absolute experts of business scaling of, you know, payroll of marketing. And, and so I can go to these different experts and know exactly how to navigate my investments, how to navigate my business and, and everything. And so self-development has gone from whatever I can get for free to, what's almost the highest I can pay to get the very best. And so, but those three things, if you went for, if, if you did a piece of marketing or a video a day, 20 no's a day, or even five no's a day, 10 no's a day, and self-development every single day, that is something that would make success inevitable. And so the way that I tell people, um, you know, about this whole, you know, concept here is, if you were to share with someone what you do each and every day, would they hear what you say, not what you plan, but what you actually do every day? Would they hear that and say, well, yeah, that's, that's going to work. Or would they say, hmm, I don't know about that. I, it may or may not work. When I share 20 no's a day, video a day, self-development every day, no one's ever surprised. Oh, that worked. Oh my God. That's surprising. Right. <laughs> and it's so like, are what you do are, is what you're doing every single day. Will it make success inevitable? And if not, then you may need to reevaluate one or the other. Either your goals, which no one wants to hear, <laughs> if you're not willing to do the work, then why don't we make you happier and actually lower your goals? Which I know to some people that sounds real, that sounds like battery acid in the eyeballs, but, um, but, uh, you know, but let's be realistic. If you're not going to do the work and you have humongous goals, what you're doing is you're carrying an incongruency that's eating you alive. And so it would actually be better for you to say, you know what? I may not become a top earner, but I want to make a few hundred bucks a month. And this routine is congruent with that. You'll actually feel better. And so and if that doesn't feel good, then, then you do need to up your habits. I love that. And one thing I, oh, whoa, monsoon just hit. Sorry, distracted uh -oh. all of a sudden. I, I have a couple of questions in there. Sure, let's do it. All oh, this is so strong. So first of all, I love that he just gave you an exact daily method of operation that would make success inevitable. And I'll just say it again. I know he said it three times, but come on guys, a video a day, go for 20 no's, not 20 and then didn't respond, 20 no's and some kind of self-development. Um, it led me, something you were saying led me to a question. And I think mm -hmm. that this is something that has always, I think it lets me check myself each day. And this is maybe something you could even journal on at the end of your days for those of you looking for things to do, et cetera. Uh, but for me, I look at the end of my day and I go, would I want to recruit me today? 
Yeah. And for some of you, you need to get honest. Did you do those three things? Do you want to be in business with you? Would you go, oh, yes, like, awesome, talk it out. Because people are out there looking for that magical recruit. And I'm going to tell you right now, the magical recruit is already recruited. It's you. Yeah. It's you. Let me, you let me give you a different way to look at that question, though. Okay. Sure. Here, because here's, because if you ask, would I want to recruit me today? That's, that's a flexible question. What about this? Would you, if you were running a company, would you want to pay you the income you're desiring? Ooh. And so if I'm running a company. Say it again. And, say it again. Yeah. So if I'm running a company, so let's say someone is, you know, a, a rep wants to make a million dollars a year. Okay, fine. Would you as a company owner hire someone that did your activity every single day and pay you a million dollar salary, taking a million dollars off their profit sheet, take a million dollars off their spreadsheet? Would you be willing to do that? And of course, this is a hypothetical, so you could, you know, pie in the sky it and, and whatever. But if you really think about that, um, most would not. <laughs> and right. so how do you change that to be like, oh, yeah, that would be a deal. That would actually be a deal. And that's how you know that are you adding value to the marketplace? Are you actually solving problems and showing up and doing the work? Because if it's like, yeah, I am definitely worth you know, whatever, six or seven years, whatever, um, then, uh, you know, then I think you're on your way. But most people, I don't, I don't think are congruent with that question. I, I love that you said that. That's, that's, that's way better than would you recruit you. <laughs> I love it. Better, okay. but just a little different. I love it. I say it's way better. This, <laughs> this is my podcast. I'm going to say what I'll say, right? Hey, kid, yeah, okay? Yes, yes correct. <laughs> um, okay, so you mentioned you hire a lot. Uh, you know, now it's not just what books can I get at the library? What can I find on Google? What can I do? Whatever, which is a great place to start, by the way. Okay, yeah. this is not me telling you not to do. Guys, this podcast is free 99, okay? You didn't pay anything for this. This is free. There's a ton of free stuff out there. I want you to get as much free as you can, but I'm going to tell you right now, I want to know, tell me some of your, who are, okay, cup question. Who are some of the coaches that you love? And then who are people that have mentored you either currently or in the past? Yeah. So, um, I mean, one of our, you know, re, I think, you know, I've, I've shared this with a few people, but, um, I gave uh, Grant Cardone a hundred grand for six hours of his time. And, um, and so in our one, the advice and strategies he shared with me has has made between eight hundred to nine hundred thousand dollars, and what? that's our one. So if you break down hundred grand six hours, that's seventeen thousand dollars an hour. I've actually only done three hours with him, but the moves that we made, and keep in mind, a good coach isn't doing the work for you. Like he didn't do any work for me at all. He didn't promote right. me, or actually, technically, he did have me speak on a stage, but that this return came way before that. And so, um, so he's, he's one and he is, you know, I have a knack for understanding how to really work well with the right coaches. Um, he's an interesting dynamic. There's certain things he's fantastic at certain things he would not be a good coach for. Um, and then we have, um, you know, we did for about a year and a half, we worked with the, um, Gazelles Corporation, which is a scaling company and, uh, Vern Harnish wrote the book scaling up and they were, they were helpful for sure, um, because we don't want to just be bogged down with just strategy. You need, you wanna have a business infrastructure um, knowledge as well. And so it's really easy that as you're coming up to just hire strategy, like marketing strategies, advertising strategies, and this different things. But if you don't have the business infrastructure of how do you handle payroll? How do you handle um, you know, liability insurance? How do you handle, you know, like, you know, different, you know, aspects of your, your, you know, profit and loss of, you know, how much is your lifetime value of a customer, that, that sort of stuff, then you're only going to grow so much. And so, um, you know, we currently work with uh, some of my friends, uh, Paul and Heather Christie, who are business coaches. Um, I think one of the, one of the mentors I really needed and um, just had a massive, massive impact on me was Mark Hoverson, who, who did pass away, um, died, um, you know, I think a couple of years ago now. And, you know, he was um, such a brilliant, brilliant mind. And, and it turned out, interestingly enough, that he was also um, just amazingly tenacious and the end of his days, you know, when he's doing, you know, Facebook lives and he's literally 60 pounds, all bones from the chemo and everything he was going through and the back yeah. surgery and everything. And so like, he is just such a, he was just such a warrior and just such, 
such a smart dude. And I'll, I'll share with you one conversation I had with him. So I remember when I first started, you know, working with him, basically I saw him speak at an event. I bought one of his courses 15 minutes in. I'm like, this guy's very smart. So I hung up, I stopped the course. I never finished it actually. And, and I, so I reached out, I got his phone number and I said, I, I want four hours with you. Um, these are the four topics, which I, I don't remember exactly, but these are the four topics. I went four hours and this is what I'm willing to pay. He's like, uh, all right, let's do it. And I remember that one of the first conversations I had with him is I was sharing with him how I was recruiting people, which, you know, I was the number one income earner of a company at that point. Um, I was, um, you know, recruiting a good amount of people. And so I explained to him my process and he goes, oh, he goes, dude, if I had to do that, I would wonder what the hell was wrong with my marketing. <laughs> I'm like, got it. <laughs> and so he made me like, like really rethink marketing and copywriting and how to say, you know, words in certain ways, because, you know, I had kind of blunt force attacked, you know, the career and it had worked right to a degree. And, and so just a very, very big mind. And, and, uh, you know, we definitely love on and, and appreciate his, uh, remaining family. Yeah, I, I love that. And his legacy really has lasted. You know, I never had the opportunity to, to meet him. Yeah. And so much stuff. I was following that whole entire, um, yeah. you know, through his whole sickness. And it was amazing watching the network marketing community come behind somebody like, like that has just impacted so many thousands and thousands of lives. And that's really, legacy is what I think a lot of us are, are aiming for here. And so I, I think I'm glad you brought him up and for sure. continued more of his legacy for more people. So that sure. I'm a mush ball. So that's like all of my heart. I love it. Um, okay. So my question then is, is just generally speaking about mentors then, because I really, for, for me in my experience, I don't know anybody who has done it alone. I don't know anybody who can just come up with the ideas by themselves. And so I, I still think I see people out there who are like, they're banging their heads against walls over and over and over again, and they're not getting anywhere fast. Um, and so questions just kind of on maybe your general theory around mentorship. And then I heard a concept I really enjoyed the other day, which is you should go deep on mentors instead of wide, mm -hmm. meaning like, pick your ones like you list you didn't list 18 people you know right. you said here's my mentors in this space i have this in this space i have this in this space i have this or actually it's just this and this this and this and you went deep it's what it sounds like um i would love your perspective on that as well um since since obviously mentorship is something that you are you are clearly passionate about and you see a lot of value in so i would love um i would love to hear a little bit about your opinions on yeah. that yeah i mean it, i mean you know, so it's funny because as I was, um, I don't know, coming up or whatever, um, it, it was interesting because, and especially in network marketing, I had a lot of people that were like, dude, why are you paying for a coach, man? And like, they, you know, I'd get chastised and like, you know, aren't you fired up enough? And, and just to be clear, I've never hired anyone to get fired up. Like that, 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 that concept doesn't make sense to me that um, I understand others need that, but I, I definitely don't need that. Um, I hired him for strategy to curb the time. Like there are things that I, you know, I was, I was thinking about this. There's things that between Mark Overson and, and, and Grant Cardone, I mean, there are things that would I have ever learned? Maybe, you know, but maybe not for 10 years. And so uh, getting the right coach or mentor is, is just a shortening of, of the learning curve. It's a, let me, let me impact more people faster. And that is the fastest utilization of it. But one thing to understand is just like a personal trainer, they're not going to do the sit-ups for you. I've never had a coach build my business or get me a sale. You know, like they, they are there to say, go do this and this, and you go do this and this, or you don't. And what's funny is a lot of the, the higher end coaches I've hired over the years, they're like shocked that when I actually go and do what they suggest, because a lot of people don't, a lot right. of people get that adrenaline rush from just paying the money, right. but don't actually do anything with it. And so, um, you know, if you are an, uh, an executor, if you're someone that actually implements, then you're probably going to get a very good return. So long as you're picking the right coach and, and there are bad ones out there, or I don't know if bad ones is the right, you know, right thing. I mean, they try their best, but maybe they're just not, um, you know, there are people that are very smart that aren't, aren't great coaches. Um, and, um, you know, it's just, but for me, there's nothing, there's no insurance investment, stock investment, crypto, there, there's literally nothing 
that can even come close to the kind of return I can get when I get with a strategic coach. And I do definitely agree with uh, going deep. So I have, you know, um, you know, and uh, one of my business coaches is also an attorney, so can go very, very deep in a couple different areas, um, cool. but has no, no concept of digital marketing. Right. So like I, I have these you know, pockets of, of coaches that are very, very good at what they do and very deep on that particular topic. They can't speak to every aspect of the business. Um, and that's, you know, that's OK. As you're you know, just looking to you know, get one, you know, one coach, if that's what you're looking for, is you want to look at, OK, what's the thing that I want to get really, really good at that this person is already good at or has already accomplished and and, you know, and go with them you know, and, and have them help you out. I love the perspective of it shortens your learning curve. You know, it's like number one. Somebody, if somebody writes a book, it's their sixty years of life condensed into right, two hundred fifty right. pages. Like you need to right. devour that stuff. Uh, and I, I love that concept. Like I said, of the the going deep because I thought to myself, my gosh. That's exactly what I've done. You know, I think people get so confused. They're like, well, Ray said this. And then I went over and I listened to Fraser and he said this. And then I listened right. over here to blah, blah, blah. And he said, do this. And then I listened to, I'm like, turn off the noise. Yeah. If you want Ray Higdon's success, then you join Rank Makers. And then you find out about his VIP coaching and you read every single one of his books and you follow every single thing he does and you use his journal and you buy his little ring light and you just say, I am a student of Ray Higdon and you let it be that. When people I are like, like I <laughs> oh yeah, it's great advice. That's right. Write that down. <laughs> but it's like people say, oh, Jesse Lee, I loved that episode of the podcast. And then I loved your YouTube. And then I, but then, yeah. you know, I was listening to Joe Schmo blow blow. And he yeah. was saying that, you know, what you need to do is that. And I said, listen, yeah. is, do, do, does Joe Schmo blow blow have the results you're looking for? Do they build the same way that I build that you're looking to build? If right. the answer is no, then okay. I understand you like their story. I understand right. you like, oh, well, he's got a great, what? What are you trying to do here? Because right. I think there's so much out there right now and it's stifling people's success. That's why I'm kind of harping on it a little bit. Yeah. I think it's stifling people's success. Find someone you really resonate with. Somebody you're, you, you hear them talk and you're like, oh, I think part of me is inside that person. Yeah. And hold on to that. I mean, there's a reason why, no matter what anybody says, I maintain a friendship with Ray. He's amazing, my God. But I'm like, you're a half comedian. I'm a half comedian. Like I'm <laughs> funny. Okay. I'm hilarious. Yes, actually, you are fact. for sure. You are funny too. Like I have stolen one of your, like the steak knives for teeth. I added yeah. onto my emaciated <laughs> joke because I'm like, I am definitely stealing that. It is funny. <laughs> I'm like, you're like, you're my kindred spirit, you know? Like, so if I were out there looking for a network marketing coach, like I wouldn't really have to look very far. Well, thank you. I, really, I appreciate I, that. I, I, but it, I mean it. It is. And it is a good point in that you're talking about, and I may have, I may have missed it, sorry, but you're talking about the consumption of content from so many different sources. Yes. And that is definitely something like I'm really psychotic with my time. So unless I see someone as that's the person that knows what I want to know about that particular thing, I'm probably not listening to them. And so I, I would be very cautious with how much because let's I mean to be honest sometimes free is the most expensive option and so if you're out there consuming all this free stuff but it all conflicts then you're not moving forward that's very costly and so you know sometimes it actually makes sense to like you said dive deep with one person which I kind of I kind of missed what your original point so I'm glad you brought me back <laughs> yeah no I, I love what you were saying I just wanted to reiterate it because I think it's something not enough people are talking about and no. then people go well, it's like, tricky. Congratulations. It's tricky as a trainer to say that because you know then it looks like I'm saying don't don't listen to anyone. Well, else, you didn't right? say it. I right. said it, and I'm right. not a trainer. I'm not a coach. I got nothing to sell anybody. You go get my free resources on jessieleeward.com. I'm not selling you nothing. I am telling you, go to Ray Higdon. <laughs> but I really mean that though because I see people getting results from you first and foremost. Second Thanks. of all, if if you and I have very similar skill sets, if we're just being honest. So if I were looking for like, like, I would just relate to you. I would want, to, I would feel like I had a kindred spirit, like I said, that just gets okay. where I'm trying to go with it. You know, there's people, some, even some of the people you mentioned as mentors that I'm like, see, I couldn't do it. I'm just, right. I just couldn't do it. But then I also see the point where I'm like, you know what though? Cause I do spend money on stuff, of course. Sure. I know you know that. But I'm like, you know what? Maybe what I need to do is I need to go spend $100,000 for six hours with somebody. And I need to be like, hey, <laughs> listen up. I'm trying to make a $900,000 return in four hours. Let's go. <laughs> uh, which I mean, that just sounds 
sounds great to me. It sounds like uh, it sounds like <laughs> next Tuesday. You know, I'm gonna pencil that in. But I, I love actually. You just gave another huge tip, and we we kind of scooted right past it. But you were talking about uh, you are. I, I forget what you said. Something about your time. You're cra- crazy. I'm actually. just nuts about my time. Nuts. And I'm the same way. And I love, that's why I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. I'm stuck on this call. So I let you know before the call, you know, cause I'm like, no, like I'm so respectful of people's time. And I, I, I love that you're leaving time for action is what I'm guessing is yes, what that is. For sure. And so I don't need to know your full calendar or anything like that, but what percentage of your day is spent maybe on, I mean, I know there's other stuff like families, you know, super important and everything. Yeah. When we're talking about the actual work that's going into your day, how much is going into that, that consumption or that mentorship or that coaching or that personal development and how much of it is like, shut up, Ray, implement. <laughs> um, you know, and, and it's, and it's different types of implementation now, you know, a lot of times I'm, you know, hearing from our, cause we're, you know, a little different, right? I'm hearing from a, our COO and, and guiding the projects the, the right way. Sometimes I'm hearing from the, the marketing team or the, you know, whatever. Uh, and so, uh, but as far as how much time do I spend studying, I would say, unless it's a special day, I mean, it's, it's maybe an hour, maybe an hour a day of when I'm running, listen to an audio book, when I'm, you know, doing some other things, um, you know, having a coaching call or, or something like that. I do, um, probably one of my favorite things to do is get VIP days with people where I get them like, you know, six hours or whatever, you know, one-on-one kind of thing, uh, which is usually, you know, a pretty penny with, you know, depending on who the person is, but um, that's where I, I tend to be able to ask all my questions, knock it out and then, you know, go on my merry way. Um, but, um, but yeah, I'm definitely not consuming all day long every day for sure. Yeah. I think that's important. So thanks for saying it. Uh, question. Now, yeah. this question was asked to me when I when I was in Germany, half asleep on tour, like one of these things, you know, GoPro camera in my face. I'm like dying. They're asking me all these things. For, they're, they're saying, you know, well, give, come on, give me a tip for success. And what's interesting is I think out of my sheer exhaustion, <laughs> I was actually pulling from the reservoirs of my brain where the real stuff is. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, yeah. I think sometimes when it comes to, oh, well, what's made you successful? You're like, there's nothing different between you and me. I just, you know, what that, that. okay. So I had one that got pulled out of me. Do you have one that maybe, you know, you're like, yeah, this one thing I was willing to do, you know, repeat it, whatever it is, of course, probably consistently and probably whatever else we know consistency, blah, blah, blah. But I really want to know, was there like a thing that Ray Higdon was willing to do or that Ray Higdon did that just, it just, it took you to that next, that next thing, that next level? You know, uh, I really, I really think if I, if I look back, because it's, it's always about who did you, how did you change who you were? Mm. And, and like, what are you doing to change who you actually are? And, and so for me, and this was quite a while ago, is, um, so I was working for county government, and I was a, I think at that point, a junior project manager or something like that, or a business analyst or something like that. And this, my boss, Maggie, who's the best boss I ever had, and she was just amazing, super smart, super tough. And, um, and so she said, hey, um, hey, Ray, you know, I'd like you to do a you know, presentation for the, you know, for the group, um, you know, on Wednesday and just put together your project and present it. And I'm like, like, what, what do you mean? And she's like, well, you know, just get up in front of the you know, group. And, and I was terrified out of my mind. I mean, I was so scared. And I didn't know it at the time, but looking back, I know why I was scared. And to be honest, the version of who I was, I was scared of being found out that I wasn't very smart. And, and so everyone around me was smarty smarts. And this was the IT department, which I felt like I was already punching above my you know, weight belt and um, and I, I felt like I was the hardest worker, I'll outwork you, but I felt like everyone around me was smarter. And so I was so terrified. I, although I didn't know it back then, I was just terrified. But looking back, it was, I was terrified of being found out that I was not nearly as bright. I thought I'd be laughed at and everything. And so for three days, it was like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm reading books on public speaking. And these are people I worked with for years. And it's like six or seven people. And I'm terrified <laughs> out of my damn mind. And so I'm reading these books on public speaking. They, there was one thing they all had in common, which was if you mess up, no one will know. 
oh, man, I'm really holding on to that. And so that morning, I remember uh, back then I had a, you know, a landline, you know, and I remember my hand on the phone to call in sick. And I'm like, I'm not going in. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm just going to blow it. I'm going to be an idiot. They're going to fire me. Like, I, I can't do it. And, and so my hand's on the phone and just something in me says, you got to go in. And so I go in, I do the presentation. I somehow develop a stutter. I spill water all over myself and, but I'm done, right? I'm done. I'm like, I did it. I survived. And afterwards, Maggie pulls me into her office and says, Ray, can I ask you a question? I'm like, uh, you know, yeah. You know, and I, I'm actually kind of feeling elated because I got through this damn thing. I survived and I was man enough to, to actually do it versus run. And she asked me, she goes, Ray, are you on drugs? <laughs> she did, I did so bad and spoke such nonsense that she, the person I looked up to, because I didn't have a great relationship with my dad. Yeah. I literally looked up to her more than anyone else on in the world. And she's asking me if I'm on drugs. And so I remember afterwards, I mean, just being defeated, just being distraught, depressed. And I'm sitting in the parking lot and I'm just like sitting there. And I'm just like, I'm going to go home. I mean, I'm, I'm just not coming back. I'll find another job. I'll go in a different direction. We'll figure this out. I'll go back into sales because I had you know, been in sales and then came through this path um, for you know, other reasons. But um, something that was like, no, man, you're not going to do this. You just got to get better. And so the next day I go to, um, I'd never been to any college, even though my, my um, job actually required a degree. I just kind of worked so hard that they just like gave it to me. And, um, and so I go to college the next day and I said, put me in every class where you have to speak in front of the room. And so um, they're like, well, that's usually the last class people do, but okay. And so I went into public speech and critical thinking and there's one other class where you had to get up and give presentations. And so I did that. And then I set this really weird, makes no damn sense goal of, I wanna speak on the Vegas Strip. Now I'm working for a county government in Naples, Florida, this makes no sense. They will never have me speak on the Vegas Strip. Uh, within two years, I was working for a speaking company and I spoke at Planet Hollywood. And Aww. so, but it's that, that taking the hand off. That, like, remember how I said, why bother? And um, I don't feel like it. Well, both of those were kicking in. The fact that I did it, pushed through it, grew from it, completely changed who I am. And that's the kind of moments. And it reminds me of there's an Eminem song out there where he says, what if I didn't go to the Rap Olympics? It's a, an amazing song. It's not one of his more, more popular ones, I don't think. But he talks about how do, what if I didn't go into this? What if I didn't show up here? What if I didn't go meet this person? And it's like, what, what are those moments in your life where you're at a fork road, you're a fork in the road, and you either choose, I'm going to become who I'm meant to be, or I'm going to shrink and shrivel, and I'll never meet my potential. And so that, of all the different things I've done, I think that is the most responsible for what has happened here 20 years later. So wow. That was probably 20 years ago. That's such a good story. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so I have one last question. I totally respect your time. I know Lil Bear is somewhere around the corner. She wants daddy for sure. I already know it. I feel it. I feel the I, I energy. It too. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. So final question, Ray, and then I want to thank you for your time. I just want to know if there's one final key to success. It can be super short, super sweet, or it could be drawn out, whatever you want to do. Um, what would one final closing thought for success be for anybody listening today? Yeah, I mean, you know, for, for me, I love the Steve Martin quote, be so good they can't ignore you. That's how I've been showing up, you know, for 10 years. When companies rejected me, when, you know, leaders would talk behind my back, when, you know, people would say, oh, he's just going to steal your people or say some nonsense. Like anytime all of that stuff, I'm just like, I'm going to keep showing up, y'all. Y'all are underestimating me. And, and so I really grow to that. And so to comprehend that, what does that actually mean? It means help the most amount of people. It means provide the most amount of value, provide the most amount of solutions, impact the most amount of people, be the example, be the reason that people keep going. And so that's one that really drives me and, and hopefully that'll help someone. Thank you so much. And uh, for those of you listening to, I love that. Be so good they can't ignore you. I even read a book about that, actually. So good old Steve Martin. Ah, you're so good we can't ignore you. For those of you following the puzzle for the podcast, the letter you're looking for today is I, as in incredible Ray Higdon. Goodness gracious. I wish it were R so I could be like, Ray Higdon. 
<laughs> but I will tag all of Ray's stuff in the show notes. You must check him out if you have not already. Ray, I respect you so much and everything you do for this profession. And you are Likewise. just an absolute light. And especially during these crazy times, I truly, yeah. truly appreciate you and value you. So thanks for all you do. I love you and I appreciate Aww, you. Thank you so much. So proud of you. You're amazing. Thanks for having me. Of course.